How to create a fantastic workplace culture, how to, how to stop them looking in the first place is the way I sort of think about that. My approach to that would be be, be authentic. Um, I think one of the things the last couple of years have shown us with COVID is that employers have gone down potentially the gimmicky path of the coffee machines, the ping pong tables, what it takes to, to engage people and, and to retain them. Whereas realistically, employees are looking for more. They're looking to see what you were like pre-pandemic and how, how you were as a leader and how you were as an organisation pre that. I firmly believe that the real message in that is be, be authentic, be genuine, because realistically, employees are going to see through that. Your team will see through that. I think one of the other avenues that's very important is what we are seeing uh, more of a shift towards now is a real desire for feedback, both from the employees, how they can improve, how they can be better, but also the willingness for the organisation to take feedback from them as well. Are they adapting enough? Are they engaging enough? What can they do to improve? I think that level of authenticity, that level of engagement and openness to that feedback is what is really starting to set organisations apart in good leadership and uh, potentially areas for improvement. In our organisation, uh, and particularly our industry across the logistics and supply chain, there is a really high prevalence towards frontline workers, your warehouse storemen, your uh, forklift drivers, truck drivers, this sort of thing. What we typically see is around 60 to 65% of the workforce is made up by these frontline workers. However, when the day-to-day -day engagement for those workers take place, they're often seen to max out in their capabilities. They're there to do a job on a wage rate and they go home at the end of the day. Whereas realistically, when you scratch the surface, what we see is a lot of those frontline workers are actually quite skilled, uh, very, very intelligent, very um, forward-thinking individuals. We've got examples, where we've, we've got uh, pallet repairers, for example, that have got commerce degrees. Um, so, so looking to say, well, how can that be an untapped market for both growth and retention? Not only retention of the frontline workers, but also growth throughout the organisation as well. I think we're already seeing it so hard in the logistics industry and, and, and any company you talk to, as I say, we have the benefit of interacting with a lot of different supply chain companies and everyone has the same issue. How to retain the frontline workers. They are the ones that keep the wheels turning at, at the end of the day. And without them, we're seeing the, the entire supply chain business quite eb, ebb and flow throughout this last year. The companies that have been really successful are, the, are those that have found ways to engage those workers, have found ways to expose them to other areas of the business and backfill office-based roles with those that are looking to progress through the organisation outside of just their ceiling cap. You've got to recruit for tomorrow, not for today. Where typically we've tried to find the right candidates for now, we need to look for people that can grow within the organisation in the long term. The other one, speaking to the frontline piece, is look in, not look out. If you're in supply chain, you've got 60% of your workforce is untapped. How to look into that rather than trying to find the right candidate that's a complete unknown quantity. And the last one would be be authentic. It's great to build people up, but if you're not authentic as a leader, you're just going to keep doing that. Thank you.